This is like one of the first pixel art run animations that I ever did. The problem with this is that there's so much more motion in the arms and legs and no motion here that it's quite obvious that there was really only one keyframe drawn for the chest. Hey pals, welcome to a new video and a new year. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about progress. This is something that comes up quite often when I'm streaming and uh, you know, people in chat, they ask me like, can you review some of my work and give me some pointers? Or they ask, you know, how long did it take you to get to the level that you're at with pixel art? So I wanted to cover the process of learning pixel art and this will apply to things beyond pixel art but i'll use pixel art as the subject matter i thought it would be really good as an opportunity to review some of my old work and uh, iterations of that work up to sort of more current stuff to give you an understanding of like where i was when i started and what that process looks like of getting better ultimately i'm trying to give you some peace of mind that this is not necessarily a straight path it takes time and not every bad result is an indication of a bad process. Sometimes it's just a journey. So shall we get into it? So the first thing that I want to describe to you is this metaphor of exploring a mountain range. When I think about learning, this is my like go-to. If you've played Zelda Breath of the Wild, you can think of this as like a, a game of Breath of the Wild as you're, you know, uncovering towers and you're sort of getting towards uh, Ganon's castle. But if you haven't played that game, this, this metaphor still works. So picture a beginner, right? Someone who's just starting out as starting in the lowest point in the lowest valley, right? They're surrounded by trees, they're in a forest, and they know that they want to get to a mountain peak. These mountain peaks represent points in uh, in the learning process that you would consider being an expert in. Maybe those are results that you're trying to get uh, that exude some kind of style that is professional, that's confident, uh, and that looks really good. So you may, you know, have driven into this valley seeing these mountains in the distance. You know, you, you know what you like, but you have no idea how to get there. And walking this path is the process of creating the artworks of time that you make and getting closer and closer and refining your style right so the journey is literally you putting stuff on the canvas you know going through the process of looking at it deciding if you like it trying new things etc you know as you're walking through the forest you don't know if if outlines are the thing you need to focus on or if this color palette is good or bad. There is a general lack of confidence that you're bound to feel because you can't actually see far enough ahead to know whether the decisions that you're making are going to lead you closer to the destination or not. This could be a dead end up here. So naturally, there's going to be some anxiety there. You're going to feel uh, a bit confused, maybe a bit frustrated if you start down the path and then you sort of head back the other way and then you, you scrap this project and you try again somewhere else. Uh, this is going to happen, but the worst thing you can do is quit because you can't actually learn the terrain by standing still. You have to be moving. And as you, you know, as you work, you'll head towards points. Eventually you'll find places where you can actually see a bit better, right? You're a little higher up. You have a bit more view of those mountains again, and you can recognize that, Hey, this thing that I did today on this work, I liked it. Maybe it's not where I need to be, right? I'm not at the mountain top yet, but at least something that I did is better than the last thing I did. And being able to recognize that is really important. In fact, once you're at this point, you want to look back and say, okay, when I look back down the hillside where I've just come from, looking back down at this forest, did I take a good path? Was there something that I did that could have been better? Could this have been straighter? Or is there a shortcut I could have taken? What did I like about this process and what didn't I like? and taking the time to be conscious and to at least theorize about what it is that's working and what's not and trying to understand the relationship between you know when i do this kind of thing it tends to work and when i do this kind of thing it tends not to work that will give you you know a better understanding and a better intuition for how to navigate the terrain in general and so as you get more experience and as you get better you'll have a better intuition for which paths are gonna end up in this like barren wasteland 
versus actually getting you closer to the mountaintop every time. This process takes years and it's not as straightforward as just watching a tutorial or you know hearing from me what you need to be doing you do kind of have to live it but hopefully looking around as often as you can you know taking the time to be observant and introspective and developing those skills of navigation will help you get there a little bit faster so with that in mind i'm going to show you some work that i've done over the last few years and talk about it in these terms this is one of the first kind of mock-up pixel art things that I ever did for my project Insignia. This is kind of like the one of the yeah most initial things. I knew a little bit about the setting that I wanted the, the game to be in. Uh, I was doing some work on the player's house and I was just kind of creating a little bit of a mock-up. Prior to starting pixel art, I had been doing art for a long time with pencil drawings and, and Photoshop art in general. I would do a lot of like painting in Photoshop. So this isn't really a representation of, of that, but transitioning into pixel art from Photoshop art was a little difficult because I wasn't really aware of how to use skills that I already had or uh, what new skills I needed to pick up. So I'm going to use this opportunity to talk just about grass and how the grass, the foreground, fits in with the background. So this is not a tile set. This would never have worked in the game, uh, but it's interesting looking at the choices that I made, this banding, right three colors there are some simple lines joining them you know it's not horrible to look at but it wouldn't really work in a game there are some very simplistic assumptions about like the way light works and what should be brighter versus darker we don't get a great sense of depth here and if we do it's kind of like a rolling shape right it doesn't really tell us a lot about the terrain from where the camera is to where the house is it's just sort of like colors so from here I did my first like test tile set stuff and you can see there's an attempt here to try to create the texture of grass right we have these like little tiny um, like dotted pixels it's very like pointillistic um, that just there's like a little bit of like maybe two or three connected pixels going upwards or diagonal and uh, it's the same kind of effect where you've got like we can see like bands of color that are being like um, dithered right that's kind of like a noisy there are some fluky things that I got right here about noise, right? Like the tile set shouldn't be taking away from the character. It should be clear, like the, the point where the grass, like where the ground level is should be obvious. And we want to be able to move from that very obvious high contrast line to nothing in a smooth way. So there are some things that I'm getting right here, but in general, I would say it's kind of uninspired. It's a little bit boring and there's not much going on here there's not a lot of like you know skill on display it's just sort of like the most basic thing you could do uh, so this was something that i produced sometime in 2016 i think so this is at the very very start of the project i just created the unity project and i had just created this tile set to sort of test around the geometry in the level from here there was uh, the next iteration of the grass and you can see I'm trying to do a lot more. There's still this idea of trying to feather from like the high contrast to the low contrast. I think it's a little harder to see kind of like where the ground point is, but obviously that's like the top of the sprite. So we've got like maybe a couple of pixels of, of um, like empty space where the character's feet can sink in. And we're starting to see some ideas about blades of grass that have like different colors in one blade i think that this is like quite again this is like quite a valiant effort and i spent a lot of time on this this was like maybe a week or so to get this kind of grass looking the way that it that it did um, there are some problems like i think the brightest pixels just being on their own makes it kind of obvious there are these like circles that just sort of pop up these little dots and um, the, the contrast is not very consistent throughout. There are like points that are sort of like interesting and like there are like some shapes here, but other places it's kind of softer and muddier. So again, it's not like super inspired, but there are some ideas here uh, and I kind of want to like explore them more. You can't see below here, but of course it's, it's just black underneath. 
um, which again is still something that's not that interesting. I'm trying to do some more with backgrounds here as well and you can see there's some interesting kind of contrast here um, but I have found myself in a bit of a I've kind of come up a hill and I've hit a point that's like in and of itself it's a peak right maybe we'll put it like here it's like yes from here you're higher than everywhere around you but if you're trying to go up from here there's no upwards right everywhere is down from here so you're at like a dead end uh, and this is kind of what we call like bad habits sometimes it's not that it's necessarily bad but it's got diminishing returns right there's a bit of a dead end coming up and you'll need to backtrack a little bit and think about fundamentals decisions that are earlier in the process right from here there's a turn that was made that needs to be stepped back a little bit and then slightly adjusted to end further forward what i'm describing is its contrast and it's trending towards black to ease those contrast issues so the issue here is that i've got this lovely blue sky and i've got these light colors on the grass and i need for there to be a separation between the grass and what's directly behind it and i also want to then have kind of like more interesting shapes sort of moving up through from this black like i don't just want it to be black all the way so if i want this to be green and i want this to be green and i need for there to be high contrast between what's down here and what's up here there is this temptation to use black especially if you've only got one green ramp in your palette and you're trying to use like a palette and in this next screenshot you can see that goes to like the next degree right where it's starting to actually get kind of difficult to see what's happening anymore i can explain this the series of innovations that led me here basically uh, i had designed this idea for a two-layered tile set there's actually like a layer of grass and then a second layer of grass behind and the reason why i did that was because I, I wanted the the character and the enemies to be more integrated into the environment and I think that's a good idea I think inherently that's not a bad thing but uh, alongside that I also had some ideas about integrating a texture into the foreground so this kind of ends here and then there is a texture that's all of this that's being basically masked in and the reason why I did that was I didn't want it to just be black here, right? I didn't want to just have this go like into nothing because I wanted it to have some sort of more depth in the environment. But the problem is it was very difficult to, to structure that in a way that didn't then take away from the contrast, right? Those foreground and background layers and the tile set thing in the background, the tiling masking uh, foreground meant that it was much harder to see a point where the ground was right it's very you kind of have to work a little bit to see this line and it does seem natural right it does feel like an environment like a forest that's dense with grass but as an image like the composition and as a platform game it's becoming quite difficult to actually interpret where the colliders are and that should take precedence that should come first you can also see, you know, with these backgrounds uh, behind the tile set and this tree in the foreground, it's starting to become really hard to see where things end and where other things begin. Obviously, I'm starting to pick up as an artist on something here about repetition. You can see these repeated shapes all over this, right? Here, here, here. There's like a lot of repetition. And repetition reads as consistency. Right, so it's important to have repetition in in a canvas, right? It's important to have in your composition, especially in nature, some kind of formula for how things are presented. Mostly because all of these like blades of grass are genetically the same thing, right? All of these leaves come from the same tree. So they should have some sort of formula for how they, they are presented that's consistent with some variation, of course. But obviously the result here is that we have a problem again we're going towards black and what that's doing is it's closing all of these shapes the difference between a closed shape and an open shape is the following right if I have a line that goes like this this is an open shape right the line is broken a closed shape 
is when the entire contents are separated from what's outside. So this is a closed shape, this is an open shape. So the issue here is that closing these shapes with the negative space, right? Like being able to trace black all the way around these creates a cluster of independent objects. And what that does is it draws our eyes attention to these, right? And that's happening everywhere. So what we're seeing is lots and lots and lots and lots of shapes as opposed to one space that's flowing. We're not seeing a tree, we're seeing hundreds and hundreds of circles, right, or, or leaves. So that's a lot of signal. But in an image like this, you really want to take that signal and reserve it for the things that really matter, right? You, you wanna like wash away some of the stuff that doesn't matter, like the, like the clouds in the background here, right, for example. These are much, much more open shapes. You can see that there's like a line you can trace all the way through of consistent unbroken color and it's very soft right all of this space super like consistent there's no breaks in the color here and the colors are very uh, close together so your eyes don't look here at all it's nice and ambient whereas here your eyes is very you know strongly drawn to it so i had this problem to fix this i had to take a few steps back and understand a little bit more about principles of composition and that took me some time so this was created in like 2018 2019 and returning to environments in 2021, you can see this is a, a lot stronger of an image. This isn't finished. This is something that I was mocking up this week. So the difference here has to do with being much, much more decisive about where the levels of detail go. In the previous example, everything was detailed everywhere. In the new example, I'm still using color that's not black, right? I'm still using this green and I'm still using different hues here but where the detail is, is much, much more considered. And I'm increasing that detail in stages where I want you to see it. So in this case, away from the player character, right? Further out of reach here. And in very specific points, do I have contrast? It's not necessarily just at the top. I've got some depth here, so you can see some parts of the detail creeping down into the, into the shapes. But, you know, there are very few closed shapes here. Like we've just got like three or four or five little bits here. And then the next level of detail down, the next shade down is all open. You can follow this line all the way through. And then the next de detail down from that is way, way open. You can see that across like one leaf, a cluster of leaves, a bush, the entire hedge line. And that's something that took me a long time to figure out. In addition, obviously, you can see the, the tile set here. The details have gotten much, much bigger and the contrast is being handled way more carefully. I've returned to having just one layer uh, and there's a little bit of work that needs to be done here. This, is, this was a mock-up actually, it's not actually a screenshot, but you can see like there is a highlighted edge along this path here that's not the top of the sprite. The top of the sprite is like up here somewhere, but the actual collision, the collider runs between these two parallel lines. So the collider is somewhere along here. And that means that we can think of this as having like a different uh, face to it, right? It almost feels like this is kind of like a, like a right angle, right? So we're like up and then across and then up again, right? It sort of feels like another, another face. And I'm using, again, using contrast or in this case, a lack of contrast, this unbroken line that you can draw all the way across here helps the player separate this from this. So understanding where details need to be, how to smooth details out, how to draw attention to certain parts of a scene or certain parts of a sprite and allow other parts to breathe, that's taken me you know, if we back up, we're going from 2016 all the way to 2021, five years of doing environments and stuff before I was able to really confidently put this stuff together. And not only that, but a difference in the time it takes to create this kind of thing. Because there's less overall detail in this image, this background, this took me like three hours. Like it was not a big effort. Whereas like these trees, right? It was like a week and a half of, of evenings. And in the end, it was like actually taking away from the work because it was just too much.
And that's going to happen. As you learn, you have to experiment with stuff, right? Understanding, oh, I can do more details. Oh, I can have repetition. Those things are lessons to a beginner, knowing when not to use detail. That's another lesson. You have to understand that there is a technique before you can understand when to use it. And so it's very likely that you'll overstep. Coming back to this example here, you know, from the beginning point, you might go, oh, there's some, like maybe this direction is like detail. You might go, oh, this, if I add detail, it looks better, right? I'm getting closer to this mountain if I just go this way. And then you go too far and you're like, oh crap, now it looks like an over detailed mess. You have to backtrack until you find a point where moving forward takes you actually closer. And sometimes, you know, that's an extra couple of months of mucking around. These are things that you kind of are naturally going to do because the only way to understand the space is to navigate the space. And you have to know where the dead ends are to avoid them. And so for me, trying to understand the broader lessons of like, what did I do wrong is a really good way of trying to understand like the region I've stepped into. Not just that this is a bad point, right? But that this is a bad area, right? Or that this is a bad direction if I go beyond a certain point. Because you can cancel out way more space, right? You can say, well, definitely I don't want to make seven more over detailed tile sets if I've diagnosed the problem as being detail oriented, right? Which is like a directional thing, as opposed to, oh, I just did some bad art today. Maybe I'll try again tomorrow. You know, they say like the definition of madness is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Well, it's really just a, a lack of application of intelligence, right? If you're not applying that retrospection and you keep doing the same thing, well, eventually, yeah, you'll map out the space as being like full of bad points. But if you were able to understand earlier that like, oh, it's probably this whole region that's not worth doing, or just even understanding that you're in a region is better than nothing. I know that's quite abstract, but I hope that um, that helps a little bit. <laughs> and finally, this is something else that I've been working on this week. And we're kind of like returning to the problem of what to do with the foreground again. So I still like the idea, of course, of, of heading towards black because the negative space in the foreground is something that's it's commonly used in pixel art games that are side scrollers to effectively just say, well, this is off stage, right? There's nothing down here. You shouldn't be looking here. It's very common. And so uh, I'm, I'm leaning into that for genre purposes, but it's also very common to try to make this space feel more organic, right? I don't just want to go from here to here, you know, and then nothing. So I've been working on some foreground elements and even my foreground elements have been much, much better in recent months. I've got some critique that I can give here. Like I think right now they still feel like isolated assets even though there's some nice bridging going on i would like to see like a little bit more maybe in this space you know just maybe like another level of grass that's kind of in this density that's like over here and around here in a way that that makes this feel less like an isolated object and more like uh, you know the terrain is kind of like pushing outwards towards this space. So I want to see the bridge happen. These are nice proof of concepts. And eventually I will be adding the little bells and whistles to make it feel really nice. But I am not even sure that this hill should be the way that it is yet. So, so that's progress that I'm making in tile sets and in composition. And that's taken me, like I said, like I started working on the game in uh, 2016. My first concepts for the game and first tests were in 2014. So it's 2022 now. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, somewhere between six and eight years of learning and making mistakes, eventually bumbling my way towards getting better at this stuff. Uh, speaking of 2014, I want to move over to some animation now and I want to show you some uh, run animations from 2014 all the way to 2022. You ready? Here we have four run animations and uh, this one is from 2014. This one is from 2022. I want to be clear, this last one is not actually a replacement for the previous three. Uh, there is a different run animation that uh, used to be this one that looks a little closer to this. Uh, but 
uh, we're talking about two different speeds. So this is actually the sprint animation, and this is the like jog animation. Uh, there is a step in between here, but it's not really significant for the purposes of this conversation. So I left that one out. I want to talk about like the differences between these and the lessons that I learned. So if you just look at this first one, from a character design perspective, it's not so bad. Like there are there are issues with the character design that I kind of like went into and like mistakes that I guess you could say I made trying to explore new different terrain that eventually I came back full circle on or at least understood a little bit better. So I would say certain things like how flat the coloring of the shoes are in this animation. If you look at all of them, the next flattest one after this is the most recent one. So things like knowing where the detail is. You can see with the buttons too, like there were no buttons here because they're not that important. I decided I wanted to show the buttons in the animations and then every one after the first one is less obvious. The buttons blend better into the animation eventually because they're not that important as an element, right? They're not as important as like the face. So there are lessons that I had to learn by making mistakes first. Same thing can be said for detail in the hair. You can see I started dithering and I tried to start animating the hair and just sort of like, it just didn't go that well. In a lot of the iterations since, I started flattening it out and making the animation simpler. But then since then I've had a bit more confidence and been able to explore more animated hair uh, without breaking the actual designs. So from the beginning, let's have a look. We've got uh, quite a simple face and the animation in the face is very simple too. We've got like two versions that we're just moving between with slight shifts. The, the, the little fringe coming down is the only thing that's moving in the hair and like one pixel at the top there. So like here and here are like the only two parts that are moving. It's not bad. It's certainly not distracting, uh, which is fine. The torso is also like very stable. This is probably the worst part of this thing. It's like all of this is kind of like almost perfectly still, except for like the very edges here and then the arms swinging. The problem beyond the proportions, like what the hell is the waist doing so far down? Uh, the problem is that, that this process of animation so I, this is like one of the first pixel art run animations that I ever did. The problem with this is that there's so much more motion in the arms and legs and no motion here that it's quite obvious that there was really only one keyframe drawn for the chest, right? And then I just sort of like drew some arms and legs in different places and then called it a day. I had animation experience before doing pixel art animation. So I knew how the beats needed to be you can see all of them are quite good with the actual beats, like the, the cadence of them, the bouncing. They all feel reasonably good, but as, as a work of pixel art, this one really struggles because of how stiff it is in the parts where the keyframes are the same. Now in the next one, so this was done in 2015, you can see I'm trying to do a little bit more. So there's a bit of a character design change. We've got the coat now. We've got the coat shifting and waving with the animation, which I really like. I think that's a good touch. Uh, we've tried to do some more with the hair. The arms actually have like a level of depth to them. So like the forearm gets all the way to here and it's flat and it's facing away from the camera or perpendicular to the camera. But back here, it's foreshortened and it's facing down. And that's good, right? We've got a sense of depth there. It's a bit 3D. Now the face, on the other hand, is very stiff. It's, it's more stiff than the previous one, which is a problem. So it looks like the body is moving kind of like this way, like 3D a little bit, but the face is like, you know, front on, kind of like looking more towards us. And that's a problem. Obviously the, the colors are all over the place. I'm just starting to experiment with color. Like here it was all just gray. Here it's like, okay, let's do some stuff. But I'm being very literal with the colors here. Like this yellow is just like over the top. Uh, and shading as well. You can see like the shading is just, it's a bit confused. This is essentially down to the fact that I didn't have a process for the color or for the animation in general. I was just animating still frame by frame. I'd go, you know, draw the whole picture and then go to a new frame, copy, paste the picture, change some stuff, 
and then try to, you know, adjust pixel by pixel the little bits that I wanted to look different on the next frame. There was no, there was no framework. There was no draft phase uh, in the process at all. So next one over, uh, more character design changes, more palette changes. I I think this was done in 2017, and it's the first animation of the of the set that I'm still kind of proud of. Like I still think that there's a lot in this that I like, like a lot in it. One would be like the way the shirt folds move as the character's running. You can actually see like different bits picking up light as the torso twists, which is kind of interesting. The coat has a really nice snap to it as we run. Um, there's still problems with depth and perspective. So the legs are a lot more horizontal than the chest and there's still not a lot happening with the head. It's quite stable. The posture is very upright. Um, although it's a little more forward than the previous one. Um, but overall, like it's, it's just a little bit, um, doesn't have that much energy in it, right? It's very stable. And so from an animator's perspective, uh, there's a lot that's happening that's good, right? But the next level is how do we embed some more character in it? How do we tell a bit more of a story about who this person is and how they move, how they, how they operate? There are some other issues too, like we've got still quite a bit more like noise and the structure of the character which is where the details should be, is lacking. The biggest problem I think with all of these is the, the shoulders are really, really um, basically nondescript. There's just like no presence there of the shoulder. There's a little bit up here of like a shine, but it's kind of gone here. And, and I have so much emphasis on the arms and the feet that I'm not really getting a lot of structure. So moving into 2022 this was done this week uh, you can see there's way more structure in the shoulder I'm actually using some contrast to show the kind of like leather um, seam for where the arm starts it's like this seam right here that runs down you can see there's like way more structure there the colors are a lot flatter right so no more of this nonsense with like four different shades for pants there's only like two or three shades here and they're much much closer together uh, I've changed a little bit of the design of the character so that things like um, the one pixel width of the leg at the lowest point, that's no longer there because it's just a little bit hard to look at. It's a little bit grainy. So instead it's two or three pixels now at the lowest. There's much, much more twisting at the shoulder level. And uh, the perspective is, I think just in general, a little more even, right? Now we can see like the character's definitely moving like forward this way we can still see like a little bit more of the head um, like the head slightly facing towards us a little bit more than the body part of that is a philosophy choice like a design choice to show the character's face uh, this is something that I was aware of even back here like I knew that I wanted you to really see the character's head like square so that you built a bit better of a relationship to them you know, if the character's hair was in the way and you couldn't see their face, it kind of loses some of that um, relationship. Like the eyes are really important. But, you know, I've, I've relinquished some of that here in order to really capture more liveliness in the animation. And instead, it's like the hair has kind of taken over from the eyes as being the thing that really sells the character. And I like that. There's one other thing about this that I... That I wanted to highlight that happened during the animation process. So with some of these early ones, you can see there's an issue right around here where you're seeing the back arm behind the character. What that does is it creates a problem where you can't really tell which arm is in front and which arm is behind. Like there's like a, a mirroring of the animation it's almost like, especially it's a problem here where the knees, both knees come to the exact same point and both feet come to the exact same point. So you can't really tell is the front leg forward or is the front leg currently back at this point. And I kind of fixed that here a little bit, but it's still a bit of a problem. Um, here it's, it's the arms are definitely fixed. So like, you know, the two arms go back to a certain point 
and they don't cross like the same pixel. And I did that by making this, you know, more uh, perspective, right? Like we the perspective of, of the characters facing more towards the camera, not horizontal. But then how do I solve the same problem here? So now the character's facing more horizontally, you know, I still want to make a separation between the front leg and the back leg. So how do I do that? I'll actually just pause it for a second so you can actually understand. So like, there's no real reason logically why you wouldn't see if you just follow this arm backwards, you probably would see the arm here, right? Just behind. It's not, it's not out of the question to see something like this here. But for the sake of the animation, to, to remove the repetition of seeing a blob of skin tone in that pocket, right? In this space here, to make the, the, the steps more asymmetrical, I just erased it completely. So when you're watching it, you can tell which arm is the front arm, like the one closest to the camera, and which arm is the far arm, because you can track this line on every frame. You can track this arm all the way forward, all the way back. And there's never any confusion about it. Whereas if I was to draw the arm, this arm back here on this frame, you would see this blob here, and then you would see it again here. And that would create this kind of like uh, confusion in your, in your brain about like what we're looking at, which arm is in front, which arm is behind. Those are like very subtle techniques that if you're still starting out, if you don't have a great process, you never really catch that kind of thing. Or if you are, you're going to be spending like a week per animation before you are able to step back from the granular things like the pixels and looking at the motion in order to actually like yeah grab that those those like higher level problems right those things that occur fundamentally further back in the journey right it's one thing to like bumble your way all the way to a destination but if there's a problem and you get stuck and you can't go any further forward, you have to step back to understand like, what is it fundamentally that's stopping me from making better moves and getting me closer to the destination. And in this case, part of it was workflow, editing the animation frame by frame like this, not having any kind of structure to how you define the motion prior to how you place the pixels, doesn't give you the opportunity to navigate any better. Right? It doesn't let you think about the attitude. Very advanced um, animators may be able to animate in such a way where they don't draft the animation first. They just take a keyframe and then draw another keyframe and then draw a tween in the middle, etc. Those animators have an understanding of the fundamentals that allows them to break those principles and break the rules that a beginner doesn't have access to. So what are the takeaways? I hope I've been consistent with them. Basically, over the course of your pixel art journey, whether you're animating or doing environments or anything else, character designs, you will be going through the process of updating your map of the landscape, right? Of the, the design space that you're trying to get an understanding of. And when you start, you're not going to have a great balance between theory and practice. Theory helps. It helps make the journey a lot easier. But if you only do theory and you never practice, then you never actually get anywhere. And if you only practice and never look at theory, then you'll just be stuck either doing the same thing over and over and over again, or you will be going in different directions and not having any confidence about how to get closer to your destination. So taking the time to do what I've done today, stepping back, comparing some of your older work to newer work and asking yourself, what exactly have I learned? What is it that I like about this uh, that I've improved upon? Or even bringing in a screenshot or two of a game that you really like, that you're trying to emulate. Asking yourself the question of what is this doing that I'm not doing? What do I like about this image that I don't like about my work? That's going to help you fine tune and channel your instincts a little bit better, enabling you to pick a better direction and make more confident choices. It's okay to explore 
in fact it's necessary to explore areas that you haven't been before and that's always going to come with inefficiencies right going on a path you've never been on is leaving the destination to chance but that's okay because your journey is full of these little treks you constantly have to be trying new things otherwise you'll be stuck doing the same thing every time and so any time that you're not in a position where you feel like you've made it to the peak of the mountain any time before that there's room for exploration and ultimately like we're always exploring all the time so there is no destination it's kind of an illusion you're always on the journey um, so with that i wish you a fruitful and uh, and very uh, active 2022 with your pixel art journey hopefully you've had some fun looking at the work that i've been doing and uh, if you want you can join me on stream i've been streaming a lot more recently uh, and you can check out the development of my game so that's it best of luck and i'll catch you in the next one hey pal thanks for watching and thanks most especially to the patrons and twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project insignia to find out more click the links in the description below and uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.